All right, we're going to go to the, uh, in the Apocrypha. Let's go to 1st Ezra. The um, ninth chapter. And we're going to read verse 69. Because you see how the Most High, he's not, you know, happy with us marrying other nations or other nations marrying into us. Most I gave every man his woman. First Ezra 9 and 69 says, The nations of Israel, remember we're looking at in our affliction, we're going to see come early. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests, and Levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land, nor the pollutions of the Gentiles. You that pollutions of the Gentiles. To wit, or the Canaanites, you're going to name more nations on this one. The Canaanites let you know it's not just the Hamites or the so-called Africans. Canaanites, Hittites, Parasites, Jebusites, those are all named in Deuteronomy 7, chapter the third verse. But he had more now. The Moabites, that's the Chinese. Egyptians, Moab Africans, so-called, all these so-called, and Edomites, so-called white race. No Caucasian race. For both they and their sons have married with their daughters, and the Holy Seed is mixed. You like to say people are mixed, is mixed with the strange people of the land. And from the beginning of this matter, the rulers and the great men have been partakers of this iniquity, of this wickedness, the Bible says. And as soon as I heard these things, I rent my clothes. In the holy garment, and pulled off the hair from off my head and beard. That hurt to hurt. Pulled his beard, his hair out of his beard, and the hair out of his head. Probably bled. And sat me down, sad and very heavy. So let's go over to uh, First Ezra's the ninth chapter. And verse 7. So Ezra rose up <clears throat> and said unto them, speaking to all those that have married these strange women, you have transgressed the law in marrying strange wives, therefore to increase the sins of Israel. You see? <coughs> and now by confessing, give glory unto the most high power of our fathers, who's the who? The power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. To give power, give, give glory to our most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And do his will. Do his will. Now, mind you, Ezra was given 204 books. The majority of us only have 80 books. <clears throat> He was given 124 more books than the majority of the people have in this world to this day. You don't see all the different books of Ezra, do you? No. But you got all of them writing all, I mean, certain books, they don't came up. Uh, some books within the last hundred some years, like the book of Enoch. It wasn't back in the, find the book of Enoch from, from the uh, 1000 or, or 200 BC or 500 BC or whatever. Nah, you won't find it. Think about it. Um, First Ezra 9, and this is just the truth. I mean, we had to eat a lot. So who, all of you that don't want to eat it, hey, you better grow some fangs because you got to chew this meat. This is real. Just say the Most High. You're going to have to deal with the Most High one way or another. We all do. We had to deal with him. We didn't do right, so he punished us. Now, our punishment is just about over, y'all. And it's going to be a righteous kingdom that's already prepared to be put on this earth. It's just a matter of when the Most High decides he's going to do it. And when we get our act together, just change. Become a new man, a new woman, a new creature. Be to really be born again and to really love the Most High 
besides just saying keeping his commandments and you don't even talk about him. He ain't even in your conversation. You don't even think about him whenever you're going to do whatever you're going to do. Pray the most high. Got to pray. Oh, thank the water. He thanking him. People thanking him whenever he did something great for him. But whenever you're going through changes, you know, he don't even exist hardly. You know by your conversation, don't, wouldn't you? He said, and do his will. Do the will of the most high. And separate yourselves from the heathen of the land. And from the strange women. Then cried the whole multitude and said with a loud voice. Like as thou hast spoken, so will we do. Right? So what they do? Verse 36. And they go, they tell you all the ones that married into all these other um, nations that the Most High told us not to marry. Verse 36. All these had taken strange wives and they put them away with their children. See that? And the priests and Levites and they that were of Israel dwelt in Jerusalem and in the country in the first day of the seventh month, so the children of Israel were in their habitations. First day of the seventh month. And we know when you read uh, Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, the first verse down, that's where a street teacher began. It was on the street. And they brought the law to them. They wanted to hear the law. You see? And understand. Look at uh, Nehemiah, the 13th chapter. Um, since we're talking about um, we're not supposed to be marrying other nations and they're supposed to be marrying with us. Nehemiah 13, 13, 23, skip slack you. In those days also saw I, Nehemiah was no joke, y'all, Jews that had married wives of Ashdod. Like I told y'all, it's more than just Hamites. Ashdod of Ammon, Chinese, and Moab, Japanese, and Chinese. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod. <laughs> like Amalek, and could not speak in the Jews' language. They couldn't speak Hebrew, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them. He killed certain of them. He said, I killed some of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by the Most High. Saying, ye have not you shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. You see that? He killed them. He put them to death. Look what it says. It says, did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his power. And the Most High made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. That's these other nations. In our affliction, we're going to seek him earlier. We've got to change. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil? You know what he's saying? It's a great evil to transgress against our power in marrying strange wives. And one of the sons of Jordan, the son of Elishib, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sabalat, the Horonite. Therefore, I chased them from me. Remember them, O oh my power, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. Thus cleansed I them from all strangers and appointed the wards of the priests and the Levites, every one in his business. But a wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruits remember me oh my power for good <laughs> Nehemiah said he was no joke I'm telling you you see he put some of them to death for marrying strange women Nehemiah and Ezra was rolled, they rolled together so that's one one thing to show you know we ain't supposed to be dealing with no other nation's women 
We have our own women. Like, and then look at look, look look at this. Um, go to Matthew. What did my say? What say? Come back, Matthew twenty-five and thirty-one. When the Son of Man, who was a Mashiach Yahushai, shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, but it's 9, 16, it says 200 million, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, if we're supposed to be together, look what he's going to do. All nations will be gathered before him, and he shall separate them one from another. He's going to put the... Ammonites over here, the Moabites over there, the Edomites over here, the Israelites over there, the Hamites over there, the Elamites over there, and so forth and so on. He shall separate them one from another. You hear what he said? He going to separate them one from another. He ain't, got, ain't no integration in this when he come back. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. He going to set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left, right? So now, who the sheep? He said in Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So those sheep are the house of Israel, family of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Mind you, that remnant, that one-third. He said he's going to set the, the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. He said, For I was a hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer say it. See, that's the sheep. Then shall the righteous. Who the righteous? Let's get the definition of the righteous. So you know, because it ain't going to be your, all you that's saying we ain't under the law. You're not keeping the moral laws, civil laws, dietary laws, ceremonial laws. Let's see if it's talking about you. Deuteronomy 6.25. This defines who's righteous and the righteous. And it shall be our righteousness if we do what? If we observe to do all these commandments before the Most High, our power, as he hath commanded us. See that? Psalms 119, 172. Psalms 119, 172 defines the righteous, what it takes to be righteous. Y'all can follow these ministers of Satan if you want to. Because if you ain't dealing with this truth, you ain't dealing with the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You ain't identifying him as the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel, you're not dealing with him. Psalms 119, 172 my tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. See that? There it is. Now, going back to the righteous. Matthew 25, 37. Then shall the righteous.